Now, we're dealing in this panel with the issues of detention, water, nutrition, children, families. And next is Tony Litwinko, a good friend. Tony taught Victorian literature and creative writing at Bryn Mawr College in Pennsylvania and Queens College, part-time at Pennsylvania University. Moved to California in 79, and now is an insurance broker, but an activist on Palestine and for justice. So Tony, take it away. I'll give you a five minute or two minutes. Let me revise that very quickly. I've been retired for 10 years, and believe me, it's been the happiest 10 years of my life. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to be talking about nutrition in a very general way, not being an expert on it, but I know a hell of a lot about water because I've studied it for a long time. And I would be remiss if I didn't follow up on Tom's thing just very briefly. It took two, almost three decades for the Convention on the Rights of the Child to finally be made in uh, 1989. Let me read some numbers here. It passed, uh, the Convention on the Right of the Child passed in November 20th, 1989. And the convention was ratified by 200 countries, including Israel, uh, in 1991, which was two years after the 200 countries had done it by November 20th of 1989. Um, in 2010, UNICEF published a, um, a report criticizing Israel for not having adopted any of the children's rights laws, which they are obligated to do and had been obligated to do since 1991. Uh, the convention is still not part of Israeli law. And as you know, in the West Bank, Palestinians are ruled by military administrative law, not by civil law. The settlers are, are, are ruled by Israeli civil law. But after criticism of the way in which these children were treated under detention and under the military law, Israel actually came up with a juvenile military court system, which, according to international law, must be separate and apart from the, any other administration. Well, they used the same staff. They used the same facilities. They, in fact, if they find out that a child is a little bit younger than they thought and they have to move him to the military juvenile system, the Supreme Court has ruled that they can actually start the case from the last point at which it was established in the military adult system. So um, my mother at this point, God rest her, would say, bite your tongue. Don't get too angry about this. But the more you read about it, the more you find out about it, the more angry you get. And I think that burning white hot anger that you get deep down inside uh, needs to be there and nourish your activism. Um, we applauded the BDS thing. This is being filmed. I don't know if I can get back into Israel the next time. So, because this will go public. But, um, you know, so be it. My, my grand, grandchild will be uh, healthy and happy in Israel but I may not get to see him. I want you to keep in mind a number of things as I talk about water. First of all, the proportions of children to adults in Gaza is approximately 50%, 49%. So that when we talk about the current population of Gaza as being 1.9 million people, which estimates between 1.8 and 1.9 at the current time, estimated to be 2.1 million people by 2020. Uh, whenever we talk about population, think half these kids are kids, or half these people are kids below the age of 15. Now, I've passed out a handout here. I don't know if um, I've, everyone has got one, but if you don't have one at the table, share, please. Open to the second page. 
These are maps of Gaza, which I took from Google Maps. We may not be able to get there physically, but we can get there visually. The top one is taken from two miles high. The bottom one is taken from one mile high. The top one is of the northern part of the Gaza Strip. The bottom one is of the southern part of the Gaza Strip. Now, I would like you to look very carefully at that and look at the border of Gaza. Everyone knows what it looks like right now. But what is the most interesting thing that you see? I'm not asking you to raise your hands, but you can see in Israel, it's green. It's like flying over Kansas and watching the manicured agricultural fields. And in Gaza, it is confused and destroyed and gray and some attempt at orderly farming. The reason for that is because Israel does not abide by international law in proportionally sharing with the population of Palestine the water that is available to them. Keep that in mind. It is very, very important. You can s drill down on this Gaza map even further to a half a mile, although things begin to get pixelated by that point. But what it tells you is that Israel is a burgeoning farming country which supplies a lot of vegetables, some of which make it into Gaza to be bought by, by the Palestinian population in Gaza, some of which gets to the West Bank. But the inequality in the water situation is so evident from this photo, or from these photos, that um, you can't get it out of your mind. A few more comments on this. I will talk about the West Bank, and then I'll move back to Gaza to finish up. If you look along the border, the western side, the left-hand side, you will see what is known as the no-go zone. It is supposed to be 300 meters long. Effectively, it is about a kilometer deep. And since on the Israeli side, you can see the lushness and the greenness of the agricultural pursuit, you can pretty much assume that just a few kilometers over the fence, which Israel has guarded by a perimeter road and by watchtowers and by people who come along in jeeps with their guns, you can see that that farmland on the Gaza side of the strip might well be fertile and might well be productive to provide the Gazan people with vegetables and fruits and olives for their oil, lemons. All of that land has been destroyed on at least three occasions in the past decade when the Israelis invaded the Gaza Strip and took bulldozers and tractors and plowed up the farmland. And if you get anywhere near that fence, whether it be to throw a stone or to weed your crops, you are in danger of being shot. You must keep that in mind. As Noam Chomsky once pointed out, if they wanted a no man's land, they could have created a no man's land on their side of the fence, but they didn't do it. They created the no man's land on the other side of the fence, and they just happened to destroy some of the most uh, usable agricultural land that the Gazans had. Now, Gaza lies on top of an aquifer. It is known as the coastal aquifer. It goes from the Sinai Desert and captures Gaza through the, the southern part of Israel where Beersheba is located and, and on up along the coast past Tel Aviv up to about below Haifa. Next to that, to the east is what is known as the mountain aquifer, most of which lies on the Palestinian side of the Green Line from the, 1960, uh, the 1948 uh, partition and uh, Nakba and war that went on and, from the, and solidified in many places by the 67 war. In 2001, 
Ariel Sharon was quoted as saying, it's not for nothing that we placed the settlements where we placed them. And the reason for this is the settlements are close to springs, they are close to water sources in the West Bank, and Israel has appropriated 90% of the mountain aquifer for its own use. There are water systems coming out of the Sea of Galilee and transferring water as far down as Beersheba, which is to the north of Gaza. They use 66% of the coastal aquifer. The Gazans use 23%. The Egyptians in the Sinai Desert use about 11%. The inequities of, of water are administratively determined by many of the Oslo Accords. But the Oslo Accords, when they were done, took into place water appropriation for Gaza based upon population in the 1980s, at which point it was about six or 700,000. So Israel is taking water for its own agricultural, its own sanitation uses, and it is depriving the people in the West Bank of their normal water. Water is ruled by Israel's water company, Mekrot, which Israel owns 50% of, and Mekrot charges Palestinians two to three times per liter of water. The settlers use, the World Health Organization says that you need at least 115 to 120 liters per water per day for healthy living. Palestinians only get 60 to 70. The settlers in the West Bank, 500,000 of them versus 2.4 million Palestinians, the settlers use 381 liters per day. Now, when we turn to Gaza, we are talking about severe water shortages, and these affect not only agriculture, but also nutrition. The water table has been over-appropriated because there are so many people there. As a result of the, the taking out of the water, seawater has come in, and as a result of a poor sewage system because of wars that Israel has brought to Gaza, which have destroyed the infrastructure of the power plants to run the sanitation system, the sanitation systems themselves, and the other infrastructure associated with water so that people aren't connected to the, the piping uh, situation. Because of that, sewage has also gone into the water table. There are desalination plants and private desalination plants, and some people who are rich enough to afford it have their own private desalination um, water systems, but the people of Gaza have no good, clean water. Imagine taking your shower using salt water. Imagine using salt water to clean your, your, excuse me, your dishes. This kind of situation exists, and what it means because of the bacteria that is in it and also the uh, influx of chemicals from manufacturing and the influx from the uh, whatever uh, uh, fertilizer is brought to the farming crops and all of those farms along Israel. I've got two minutes remaining. Holy cow, I've got two years to speak. Um, um, because of all of this uh, influx of chemicals and pollution and everything else, the water system is tainted. And even water which has gone through the, the smaller desalination process may not be fit to drink and still has biological organisms in it. You will get from the intensity of my voice that I am angry. I'm angry very, very much at this injustice that has been going on. And I hope that this anger will spur myself and the rest of you to keep this in mind and make the world understand, as Layla said, Palestine represents the worst of oppression and expropriation and injustice. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you so much, Tony. It's